finding the right machine learning model is iterative, which means, of course, there's a lot of trial and error. The whole process can be tedious and difficult to understand, but it doesn't have to be. AutoML lets you automate steps like feature selection and model tuning, which means you can get to the results faster, and you don't need to be an expert to take advantage of the benefits of machine learning. In this demo, we're using census data to predict whether someone makes over $50,000. When we load the data, we can see that there are a variety of different possible predictive features, like age, education, occupation, hours worked per week. AutoML helps with two parts of the process, identifying and refining features for the model and selecting and tuning the model itself. In practice, this means that we have a data set, in our case, census data, but we need to identify which variables to use in model training. And once we have that, we need to pick the best predictive model. But before we can do all that, we need to make sure the data is formatted correctly and partition it into a training and testing set. There are only two things we need to change with this data set to make it ready to go for machine learning. The first is quite simple. Some observations contain missing values. So with this single line of code, we remove all the observations containing missing values. That's it. After this step, we need to separate it into our training and testing sets. That way, when we find a model that works, we have some data to test it on. We're going to set aside 15% of the data for a testing set using the CV partition function. We then assign the training and testing sets to these variables, and we're good to go. We could train the model on all of the data, but there might be variables that don't significantly or at all improve prediction. And more variables means longer waiting around for the model to train. But how do we know which variables are helpful? Well, that's where feature selection comes in. We use the FSC chi-square function to rank the features using the chi-square test. This helps us find the most important predictors for our classification problems. From plotting the results, we see that variables such as race and native country are not important predictors, so we remove them from the training and testing sets. With the data all set up, we need to find a model that fits. Since this is a classification model, we use fit C auto. If it was regression, we would use fit R auto. Because of the size of our data set, well over 10,000 observations, we're going to use ASHA optimization. This optimization essentially tries out various models on a smaller subsection of the data to identify promising contenders. If time is of the essence, you can even specify a maximum time to limit how long the function runs. But given the size of our data set, we don't need to worry about that. And some time after running the function, we get our model. We can even take a closer look at it by clicking here. Now you may be thinking, we have a model, we're all set. No, we have to test the model. That's why we made a testing set in the first place. There are two ways we're going to evaluate our test set's performance, with a confusion matrix and a receiver operating characteristic curve. To test our data in the model, we need to run this line of code here that outputs the labels and score values for our test set. Generating the confusion matrix is simply a matter of feeding the function confusion chart the correct information from the testing set and labels generated by our model. As you can see, the chart shows us the correctly classified items and the incorrectly classified items. Our model is much better at predicting if someone makes less than or equal to $50,000 than more than $50,000, but overall, it's still pretty accurate on both counts. But let's take a look at our true positive rate more quantitatively. That's where the ROC curve comes in. It shows us the true positive rate versus the false positive rate. Calculating the area under the curve gives us a metric for accuracy. A perfect classifier would have an area under the curve of one, and a binary classifier that assigned values at random would have an area of 0.5. The closer to one the AUC value is, the more accurate the model. We create an ROC object and then plot it. As we can see here, we have an area of around 0.9, which means our true positive rate is quite high. And there we go. We have a trained and tested model, 
It can be that straightforward. Check out the links in the description to try this demo and learn more about AutoML with MATLAB. Thanks for tuning in and happy coding.